Room is, is kind of, sort of, based on something. The novel that it's based on was inspired by the Fritzl case in Austria, but really is radically different. And it's, in essence, as close or as far from any of the other cases where women were abducted and kept. The question of research always comes up. Um, and of course, I watched some interviews and, and read about the cases, that some of the famous cases. Those sorts of details are really important. Like, you know, who gets involved? Is, is the FBI involved? Is it just the local police? Do they have liaison people? Just so that what you do is not cartoon-like, but it's, it's got the, the mark of, of reality on it. But where I think research really doesn't get you very far is in the internal experience of, of people. Yeah, so casting is very, for me, very instinctual. Quite often I've been really bowled over by people who I just would not have thought about in that part. But when they come in and, and, they, and they inhabit the, the role, you know, even if they're not right, ultimately, in that moment you get to spin off a version of your film with that person and you learn loads about that film in listening to it. And I also end up rewriting stuff quite a bit when I start to cast because you just hear the dialogue back to you. You, you can feel in a way that's very hard from the page cold. You can, you can start to feel what's working and what isn't. But if you can't audition, if, it, if you're working with people where, where you really it's an offer, then I, you know, I watch a lot of their other stuff and I, wa and I sit down with them and just have a conversation. And actually that is hugely revealing. I mean, what they're like when they're um, you know, when they're waiting for the coffee to be put down or, you know, just what their body language is like. And of course, actors are hugely um, plastic and can change all that stuff, but you still learn something about the person. I'm going to give you what I think is probably the best way I can sum up the, the core thing about directing. And this applies to production and post-production. You know, when you're there on the, on the floor and you're shooting a scene, right, and everybody else is, the DP's got to worry about what's going on. The camera's got to worry about exposure and all those things. Every, the makeup person is watching the, the makeup and is there a shine. The wardrobe person is, wants to see if everything is the continuity person's got something to do. Everybody's got something to do. Your job is to be, is to, is to deprofessionalize yourself, I think, and sit there. And if you're able to do this, it's a real skill because you're in the middle of a very artificial surrounding with loads of lights and crap and pressure and time issues and everything and egos and all that. But actually your job is to sort of let all that go and just be the human being in the room going, I, 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 that is really interesting. What that person is doing is really interesting. Next, let's make sure we, I want to get closer to that person and see what's happening there. So I get in early. I always like to be there earlier than I'm supposed to be there because I like to just um, really simply just walk the ground of the place I'm going to be shooting in. I tend to be very engaged with the crew. So I don't just quietly give my instructions to the first AD and go quietly talk to the actor. I talk to everybody. You start to attack the work that you've got to get done that day. I mean, it's really, in, in an amazing way, film, when it really works and when, it's a, when it lifts off on the screen, it's kind of amazing because it really does reduce down to all these days where you go, OK, so what time is such and such going to be out of makeup? You know, where are we going to start? If we start over here, then and then we only have to turn around once, whereas if we start here, we've got to turn back and then back again. You know, just all these questions that, are, that arise on any film shoot. And the more, the better the people are that you work with, the less intrusive that stuff is, the more efficient everything is, and you get to spend the time doing the thing that you really want to do, which is creating the sequence, you know. And I tend, so I will talk constantly with the director of photography. Um, I like to bring the cast out quite early, even before if possible, before everybody gets into this whole kind of makeup and hair tunnel, I like to bring them out early, let the scene run, not give very detailed blocking um, ideas to cast at all, but just let it happen, just listen to it in the room, then get people moving around as, as naturally as they can, and then start to see what shapes come out of that, and find uh, an interesting synthesis of what's happening in front of me and what I know I want to achieve from the scene. Then they'll go off and get their hair and makeup done, and I'll continue to mull that over and while that's happening I'll be talking to the director of photography who's been watching those early rehearsals and blocks and we'll start to, to, to break down how we're going to do it that day and then you just hit, head, head into the work and start. 
So when things aren't working, I think the most important thing is to be, be able to calmly kind of note that. It's happened to me on maybe once or twice where I've shot the morning and I've said, mm, nah, let's do it again in the afternoon. And I've done the whole day in the afternoon. And actually, if what you're doing is manifestly better than what you did in the morning, you get the, the crew behind it. With cast, if something's not working, I just think you train yourself to be um, big enough to not freak out, you know? Just watch it, just watch it and feel, what don't you believe about it? What feels wrong? What, what, what tunnel have you got yourself caught in that you thought was so important that now isn't? And I think then say to people, say, okay, there's something not right about this scene. What do you think it is? Where do you feel we, you know, take 10 minutes to have that conversation. And if you can um, include everybody in those decisions in a way that isn't, oh God, I don't know what to do, what should we do? But more like, um, I'm not happy about this and I want us to try and work out why that is. Then you're still very much in charge. And I think another important directorial skill is to let each day go as you've, as you've had it. Some will be really good and, and something will shoot really, really naturally and feel really good and you think, God, those decisions were right, it really, something happened. Other days you go, well, we, grind, we grinded it out, you know, and, and we'll see. You know, if you're looking at rushes, you can look at them with a view to the way you imagined your film and cutting your film and all that, or you can watch them and go, God, how interesting, you know. That's, you know, you start to watch them like you didn't know anything about them. And then when you, and if you're lucky in post, you'll get maybe one or two watches where you watch a, an assembly with that naive kind of openness. And then all the decisions, all the instincts that arise during that sort of watch are right. Don't get too obsessed with um, the machismo of shooting. And that applies to men and women in, as directors. It's a shorthand for like getting, getting kind of lens obsessed, camera movement obsessed, and, and actually to the total detriment sometimes of what it is you're trying to say. Think about what's happening and how, how you can allow people to experience what's happening in some very immediate way. That's usually what leads to the best decisions about where you put the camera and all that stuff. I mean, I love shooting. It's my favorite part of, of, um, of the production side of it. And I think it's because I love uh, working with actors and I love kind of feeling as though anything could happen on that day. Trust your early collaborators. Um, I think there are people that I worked with early on that I wish I'd stuck with more. Pretty much all of them I've come back to eventually.